I'm just really enjoying relaxing at Swanage and taking it all in. I think I may head up onto that grassy sort of headland up there. Early evening now and I've just climbed up onto the cliffs overlooking the bay. There's Swanage Harbour down there. Just come up here. I picked up lots of supplies. I've got beer, water, biscuits, spaghetti and chili con carne, I think. Might just camp up here somewhere, find myself a crafty little spot, cook and then put my bivvy up as late as possible. It's about 20 to 8 now and I've just climbed up this grassy area on the cliffs overlooking Swanage Bay. I've spent the afternoon down in Swanage itself, just sat on the quay, just really soaking up the sunshine and enjoying the atmosphere. It's very busy as you can imagine on a hot day like this. It's so good to see a British seaside resort thriving. This is the view I'm going to wake up to tomorrow morning because I'm going to bivvy up here. I've just parked myself on this concrete plinth. And there's even a concrete seat there. Just cooking my tea and got a couple of bottles of beer. I'm going to be a bit discreet before I put my bivvy up. I'll wait until it starts to darken, but I guess most people walking by with dogs can guess what I'm up to. Got plenty of water, all my supplies. I've got a new bivvy actually. My old one's over 25 years old and it's really starting to show signs of wear and tear. All the weatherproofing has started to just break up and, and fall out, fall apart. And I just bought myself a new one recently. The only thing I don't like about it is it's camouflage DPM, whatever you want to call it, disruptive pattern material. I just think that looks a bit naff to be honest on camping kit, a bit wannabe. But apart from that, everything else I like about it, it's a little bit higher. The main thing is it's got side entrance. And I just think as I get older, that's going to be so much easier for me to get in and out of because they can be a bit claustrophobic and trying to get in and out through the front porch. Just the one storage area you've got is where you actually have to get in and out of. And so I just think this is better designed, actually. And it looks like my water's boiled. I'm just boiling some spaghetti up. I'm going to drain that off, stir in some chili con carne. And then I've got some tinned fruit for dessert and then sausage and beans for breakfast and coffee I bought from home. There's my meal cooked, spaghetti with chilli con carne. Pans soaking, don't like eating out of pans, I prefer a plate, especially as I've got plenty of water. And this is my view. Doesn't get much better than this, unless <laughs> I get moved on. This is the camera rig I was trying to describe earlier on. So it's got the tripod mount, selfie stick mount, you can also hand hold it for stability both sides. Your camera fits in there, your phone rather fits in there. It's quite a good mobile phone holder, really really safe and it, it just feels like the phone's not going to drop out. There's a screw on the back to tighten it in. You, it's got these cold shoe mounts so I've got a light there which should make the evening filming a lot brighter and better quality I hope anyway but the main thing is this external microphone so that's just a normal external microphone on a, a mount which allows it to move about a bit and the cable there just plugs directly into the phone once the phone's in there that's what I'm filming on at the moment so I obviously can't show the whole rig and it just plugs into the earphone socket because it's a four a four stage jack it will actually convert the earphone socket the headphone socket into a microphone socket you don't have to do anything else you don't have to tamper with the software the settings anything the main thing is the microphones under that that's the wind sock the baffle whatever you want to call it and I've tried it a few times a day and it does seem to really work because when I was up on that chalk town it's quite windy up there I was expecting a bit of wind noise to come through and it seemed silent. Early days yet, 
but that's what I hope is going to improve the sound quality and the evening filming quality of my videos. I'm still waiting for adapter to come through. It's going to be exactly like that. You just literally put your mobile phone in that and it's got the selfie stick which you can lengthen or shorten, hold it on the road. But it's got one of those cold shoe mounts in the top so I can just attach the microphone to that. I'm not able to do that at the moment but hopefully that'll be here within the next week or so. 9 p.m. now just wandered down about 100 yards just looking down over Swanage all nicely lit up bit of sunset behind the hills there's that big ridge I was riding along before I dropped down looking out towards Studland and then all the built-up area beyond that would be pool going and merging into Bournemouth it's a ship there that just seems to have anchored itself there in the bay for the evening a landmass out there. I'm not quite sure if that's the Isle of Portland or the Isle of Wight. I can't quite get my bearings actually. Then that's looking back up to the brow of the hill just before it summits and goes through those trees. And it's not actually far through those to a residential area. That's where I'm going to put my bivvy up very shortly. It's gone 9 p.m. now, so I'm thinking about putting my bivvy up. So the bivvy is the gear top hooped bivvy. The reason I bought it was because my old bivvy, the Terra Nova, Jupiter I think it's called, uh, is over 25 years old. All the weatherproofing, the waterproofing on the inside is all starting to perish and break up into a million little pieces and, and just I expect an expert could probably repair it but there's so many things I've come not to like about it that I decided a while back that I would look for a side entrance bivvy and that, that's what this is. So that's the bivvy laid out. I think I've got the side entrance looking that way because obviously that's what I want to look at in the morning. You can see there's a really nice sunset appearing. It's got three poles, two long ones for the head and a shorter one for the foot. And it's got eight tent pegs. They look quite good, well made. I did bring some beach tent pegs as well just in case, well I thought I may be doing a beach bivvy so let's get it set up and I'll show you it. Anybody who's set this up will probably understand what I'm saying a bit better but it can be a bit confusing. You think there's a lot of tension on the poles, you think they're almost going to snap so you really have to try and make the shape of it before you actually uh, commit yourself to putting the, the second end of the pole in the eyelet if that makes sort of sense it just feels like you're going to snap the poles but uh, what I'd say is thread both the poles through and then it'll sort of take shape and you'll realize the the right order they go in color coding would have made that a bit easier so that's the bivvy up so two things are negatives not massive but slight negatives I don't like the camo although you can see you know it does blend in quite well here um, and also the polling system at the front, I, colour coordinated would have been good. I can probably sort of rig up something myself actually if I give it a bit of thought. Only eight pegs, so for today for example and probably most times I'll be bringing eight tent, uh, beach tent pegs. So I thought I may camp on a, a beach tonight and then the side entrance is this way. My old one, you went in that way, it was difficult getting in and out especially if you needed to get up during the night everything all your valuables were right in the way this i'd just be able to open the zips in the morning probably have a cup of coffee lying in bed i think this demonstrates the main selling point of the bivvy for me the side entrance as i said just so much easier to get in and out especially if you need to get up during the night and of course where the head porch area is there's a little bit of storage in there your things are not going to obstruct you getting in and out you may see it's all highly reflective as well but um, it's double skin door so you've got the A2 which I'm told is waterproof tying that back tonight and then you've got the mosquito nut there and obviously a second zip there for me to get in and out of. The Trekology pillow I'm told is a lot more comfortable especially for side sleepers it's, it appears much more ergonomic again what I like about this just got the single valve unlike the XPED system 
where you had the inflation valve and then the deflation valve this one is just a single valve it's got a a, a three-way valve stopper inside it so you blow the air in it traps it you press it once and it lets small amounts out and you just hold it in and it lets all the air out so i'm looking forward to using that let me show you another feature i like about this bivy bag i've just undone the second door so the bug net this is another feature i like you've got this strap there so again they've thought this through see what i mean that doesn't hold it tightly but i think it's going to stop it slipping and then there's the storage space at the top let me just go through a few of the points this is not a review i do not do reviews this is just my initial thoughts and some of the reasons why i bought it as i said my last bivy 25 years old a lot of the weatherproofing was starting to perish and there were so many things i came not to like about it so let me show you two things i don't like about this is first of all the camo i just don't like that but i can live with it this one has got two poles at the head end what i do like is they use the tunnel system i really can't stand modern tents with the clips and the tunnels it's just over complication quite often when you're tired you just want it as simple as possible i like tunnels that's just a personal opinion what i would have liked for them to be was color coded you do have to give it a bit of thought actually which poles going in which tunnel it feels if you put them through the wrong tunnels you could potentially snap a pole so i'm sure i'll get used to that but that's just my initial thought that's the two things i don't like about it everything else i really do as you can see it's got the side entrance so tomorrow i'm just gonna <laughs> open that up probably make myself a cup of coffee and look at that amazing view before I had to try and manoeuvre myself in there and believe me it was really tight and the one storage area you get at your head which is where I sort of want my shoes, my valuables, a knife in case of any trouble during the night, that sort of thing, pockets, that's exactly where you had to try and get in and out of, especially during the night if you needed to get out, so that was a poor design. This has also got a strap going across. It's not going to stop your sleep map moving that much but it's probably going to cut down on the slipping it's also a lot higher the old bivy is just not designed for these these sleep mats which really loft up high this is seven centimeters high for instance so it's it's got more height and it's also raised at the bottom as well so there's a third pole down there so your feet are not going to be touching the bivy everything's reflective material it's got two it's got a double inner door so it's got a mosquito net a bug net which is what i'm going to be using tonight hopefully and then if the weather does get bad you can sort of really hunker down and double door yourself in but these things do tend to get a lot of condensation because there's so little room in there so yeah that's the gear top bivy a friend of mine on YouTube actually did a weatherproof test. He didn't do one of these fake ones, just spraying the hose over it. He waited till torrential rain, put it up in his garden and left it out overnight. He was very careful get opening it up the next morning not to let any water in. And he did a test and this was just the one night, but it did appear to be waterproof. The material doesn't look as good as the old bivy bag I had, but then, you know, look, 25 years later the materials are so much lighter these days quite often they don't look as strong and as they can look a bit flimsy but they're just as weather efficient as the old ones so yeah i'm really looking forward to trying this out tonight wow this is just such a brilliant spot some young people started to walk across from the residential area i think down into the town some girls down there having a bit of a sit down and Maybe not a party, but just a, a nice little social gathering. One of their mates going down to join him by look of it. And I'm just looking at this amazing view. Is it dark? Is this gone 10 p.m. now? I just so love this time of the year. It's 4.25 a.m. and I've just woken up to this amazing view looking down on Swanage and then in the distance there's that lovely band of pre-dawn orange 
that's like hovering over all the lights. I imagine that's Bournemouth and Paul all around the coast. So peaceful up here. All I can hear is just like the distant noise of the sort of the waves down there and seagulls. <laughs> the bivy itself, I'm so pleased with that. The side entrance was just so much easier getting in at in and out of last night as I said before you used to have to get in feet first and then hardly be able to move everything had to be ready for you and then getting out was head first if you had a little bit of cramp in the morning sometimes it was really painful this is just so easy I did have to get up once during the night not for a call of nature just because I heard a bit of rustling on the carrier bag which is hanging off my handlebars I thought maybe an animal was trying to get to my food waste so I secured that a bit better but yeah so the side entrance really is after the first outing with this I'm just so pleased with it but the bivvy is absolutely fantastic I'm just lying in my bivvy now actually still in my sleeping bag I could probably make a coffee here actually it's just so much better than the old front entrance one when you get a new piece of equipment you suddenly realize gosh you know that's such a, a quantum leap from what I used to have how on earth did I ever cope without this and this is after only just one night this is just so comfy I'm, sh I'm sure I will find more flaws with it but my first impression after one use is just really really positive and I'm, I'm really pleased I took the plunge and bought this new one look at this fantastic colours It's coming up to 6.30am now, it's already very warm and light, people are already out walking their dogs, I had a couple of chats already, I've just got my breakfast on, I just picked up a tin of beans and sausages, all these boil in the bag or dehydrated camping meals are okay but I just figure <laughs> if you're so close to a town centre I might as well just pick up uh, a, a tin of breakfast and it's quite often it's nicer anyway it's certainly a heck of a lot cheaper I've already taken down the bivy bags so as far as I'm concerned it just looks like I'm having a al fresco breakfast here. I'm sat on the stone seat now looking over Swanage just loving this view I've had my breakfast sausage and beans I'm all packed up everything's in piles ready to go back into my panniers in the next hour or so I'll be making tracks in case you've wondered why I like history so much and I include it in my cycle tours I just feel it gives it an extra dimension it just makes it a much richer experience and it all stems from when I was a te teenager I suppose I was pretty disengaged at school that's no reflection whatsoever on teachers it's a profession I really respect and admire in fact some of my heroes are my online teachers currently it's just the one size fits all curriculum I just find myself bored basically this obsession about test scores it's a bit like sort of said only racing cyclists who win races are decent cyclists isn't it don't take it from me trust me on that you can cycle go nowhere near a race and really love what you do and I suppose I just disengaged sat I was never disruptive but I just disengaged sat at the back of the class just couldn't wait to leave school and then when I was 14 I started watching this history documentary it's probably the best documentary ever made in my opinion the world at war narrated by Laurence Olivier and it just completely inspired me I just got so much inspiration from it not the tanks and guns and all that sort of stuff like the, the social history I guess what we call geopolitics these days the stuff that ripples on down through the ages and um, history leaves clues I believe and so I just loved that and it just sparked a lifelong interest in history in fact when I first left school at 16 my first pay packet I went out and started buying Churchill's six volumes of his war memoirs so that's where the, hist the love of history comes in and 
yesterday was fantastic just sort of feeling like I was retracing it through Dorset and then mm. this fantastic wild camp last night uh, so yeah I'm gonna pack up shortly make my way back to Dorchester West and get my train to Oldfield Park I think I'm booked on the 1 25 p.m. to get a few miles under my belt I've just got onto the main road up to Corfe Castle wow what a view that is <laughs> imagine living opening your curtains of the morning and seeing that there I was looking down on that yesterday from that ridge which would have been right up there it's just poking its soft head around the corner I remember on one of my winter youth hostel trips actually I passed underneath that in the dark it's all shadowy and haunting looking and, and, and sort of eerie to be honest um, what a contrast to see it on a lovely summer's day so I'm making my way up to well I'm not sure where I'm going I'm just following the gore, go up the Gormen the Gormen uh, to Dorchester West um, I may override it in places I may not I'll see how it goes but I do sort of like need to keep my eye on the time really without sort of being too obsessed it's 9.35 and I've got 14 miles to go and 4 hours to do that in so obviously I've got time in hand I'm back on the familiar roads from yesterday so when I left uh, when I left Swanage this morning I avoided the GPS route because that was taking me back over the rough stuff that I came in yesterday and I just main roaded it up to Corfe it wasn't great I hid it at rush hour but yeah it, it was okay a few miles then I turned left at Corfe and I've been on these really quiet roads ever since there was um one or two undulations that's quite hard now I'm back on these flat roads and I just remember this from yesterday it's flat pretty much all the way to Dorchester um the ongoing saga about my gps to garmin so i'm still using two that's the new 130 that's my old face 4 200 that's the overview of the route as i've said before so it gives you an idea of where i am that's where i started that's where i am just under halfway and that's my destination uh this one just remains on the track so when I did the Norfolk pillbox tour, I put the whole of the route in that because I didn't want to keep stopping it at each stage because otherwise it just goes straight to the internet. So I logged off at the end of the day wherever I ended up on that. So if you get the picture, so that was my daily road on that. This is what I navigated on. So sometimes, you know, halfway through the day or like on the Thursday, for instance, I did about three or four different routes and that's what I used to navigate on. With this, I've said it before, it came set with GPS plus GLONASS. I switched it over to GPS plus Galileo and it seemed to be okay on a 200, but then it started playing up again. Um, I was off the route slightly, which is okay on a road, road like this, but you know, just in town centres, it causes all sorts of problems and I wasn't getting the prompts. As an experiment on the Norfolk tour, I put in two main routes, one of them I transferred it via wire and the other one I did it wirelessly through the Garmin app and one of them was giving me the prompts and one of them wasn't, I can't remember which is which so I may need to experiment with that more. At the moment what I'm experimenting is I've just gone back to the settings and I'm literally running off GPS only. So it's a limited number of satellites, but I did wonder possibly whether there's a, a conflict between the different systems. Maybe that was the cause of the problem. It's just trial and error. I'll carry on until I sort of work out a problem. I'm not technically minded, so I've literally just got to go through all the possible options until I find out, well, process of elimination. Not, not finding out what works, finding out what doesn't work. In a nutshell then, I'm just going to keep trying different configurations until I find out what doesn't work, remove each option that doesn't work until I eventually come up with what does work. Process of elimination, a bit like Thomas Edison said, I believe something along the lines of, I didn't fail 2000 times, I learnt what didn't work 2000 times. That's pretty much my way of thinking. 11, I've just got in a walk-in slot to Maxgate on the outskirts of Dorchester. So I was too early yesterday, plus the fact the early ones, the group visits were booked. She so said there's a couple of slots left, so my tour starts quite shortly. I've just had a look round Max Gate. This is the cottage that Thomas Hardy designed and built for himself. I mean, at the end of the day, before he became famous, he was actually a trained architect. It's fantastic. The guided tour, I'm not going to tell you too much about it because it's, I just recommend coming yourself. But they do prefer you to pre-book and I did actually look into booking at the weekend but all the early morning slots were, were 
fully booked and I didn't want to wait till midday. Today I've just ridden back into Dorchester, just popped in, so any chance of hooking on to the end of a tour? She said, yeah, there's fine, there's one going in four or five minutes and there was four of us all together, three other people and me. And that's exactly what happened back in March when I just turned up at Hardy's birthplace cottage at Bockhampton and also at Clouds Hill. Uh, the rest retreat of Lawrence of Arabia. So yeah, fortunate timing. Really, really gem looking around that. I'm so glad I've had the chance to look round. Eight pound entry fee and you get as much time as you want and also a guided tour because it's just nice to know the, the backstory. And, you know, just for instance, you're sort of saying he liked his privacy and he planted 2,000 trees in two layers almost so that like there was a woodland walkway but it basically just kept the, the public from looking over the wall although there was no wall at the time you know just things like that So I'm going to spend quite a, a while here just sort of like really enjoying the atmosphere and the moment and then head back to Dorchester West, my train back to Bath this afternoon. I'm now on the train heading up between Dorchester and my hometown of Bath, I'm getting off at my local station, Oldfield Park, just south of the Oval at the moment, so I love to stretch Dorchester to the Oval, the Oval to Dorchester. Hope you've enjoyed the camping experience and the cycling and the history. Not quite sure what's next to be honest, possibly a Roman road. I've just really got back into touring this year. Um, I've lost my mojo a little bit with long distance cycling. Uh, I can't really see me doing a 600 as a qualifier this year. I think what I'm probably going to aim for is start getting back to 200 kilometer fitness for the late summer and then try and do my winter 200s as I did several years ago. Um, I just, as I get older, it's getting harder and harder to sort of do the very long distances. As I did say a couple of years ago, it would probably be my final Super Randonneur series. And then I did another one last year, but this year I can't see it happening. Anyway, we shall see. Never say never. But anyway, if you've got this far, thank you so much for watching. Look out for each other and see you soon.